From America and across Europe, the big names have brought the big money to London and this game is all about making your friends go broke. Each player is starting with a minimum of $100,000 of their own cash and if they lose it, they can simply reach into their own pockets and buy back in. The starting lineup for this game is a who's who of poker. Lithuanian-born Tony G now lives in Australia. He is a player who likes to impose himself at the table and after tasting a little bit of success last year, is hungry for more. The American Eric Seidel is used to the bright lights of Las Vegas, eight World Series of Poker bracelets already won and $7 million already banked through poker. Another American, Alan Cunningham, has picked up five World Series of Poker bracelets and has nearly $10 million worth of cash in the bank. Another American, Andy Block, is a rock, paper, scissors champion and has nearly $3 million in poker tournament prize money. Chris Jesus Ferguson is a man used to success living in Las Vegas. He has $6 million in tournament prize money. Phil Ivey is widely regarded as the best cash game player in the world. This golf fanatic will be confident of adding to his tournament winnings. Heralding from Finland, Patrick Antonius now lives in Las Vegas. He is one to watch and this tennis player will be looking for the aces. Hello and welcome to the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game in association with 50 London. Big names, big players and big money guaranteed as we head straight to our commentators, Gary Jones and David Tuckman. Eric Lindgren taking a break here. Big blinds in front of Tony G. Big difference in a cash game here. You can take a break, unlike a tournament. 600 to play. Yeah, he's missing his big blind. Having a few hands off. Alan Cunningham facing suited connectors. 2,200. Pass. Alan Cunningham makes it 2,100 Pass. with the six five of hearts. Action over to Phil Ivey. <laughs> Whose button it is. He lets it go. And Patrick Antonius. Wow. A couple of black tens there. Well, it's a re race from Patrick Antonius. Pass. 6,100 more. It's quite a decent sized re race here. I don't know whether he's going to want to call this with suited connectors. I think Antonius making that big raise, big re raise. He doesn't really want to call it with tens. Pocket tens can be a tough hand to play at a position. More often than not, you get at least one over card. Do you go straight to the muck if you're Alan Cunningham in this spot? Well, it really depends how much money you think you can win here. He's got a hand that can crack an overpair. And he's going to call this. He's very deep and so is Patrick. He's going to make this call with the 6-5. Well, that's a, a terrible looking flop for Patrick Antonius. He is actually in front right now, but it has brought a flush draw for Alan. So it does give him an opportunity to play it with a little bit of strength. Checked. Make the semi bluff. My thinking is once Alan Cunningham calls my re raise, yeah. I'm scared at my two tens. And I hate that flop. Well, it's gone check, check. Here comes the turn. Turn is a queen of spades, yeah. and it's getting uglier and uglier. Well, it gives him a double belly buster now. We can catch a nine and a king to make a straight. Check. If it's a nine or king of hearts, we could see some fireworks on the river. Seven. It's not, it's the seven. The only way that Alan Cunningham's going to be able to win this Check. is with a bet, and he knows that. Check. Well, he's basically just saying, Check. I give in this pot with that check on the river. And the $19,000 pot goes to Patrick Antonius. Interesting way to play that hand if you're Alan Cunningham. I'm surprised he didn't take a shot at it at some point. 
Yeah, he, he had opportunities. He's probably afraid that Patrick's trying to set up a trap here. I don't know if he'd have got rid of Patrick on the turn. It would have to have been a pretty decent size bet. We'll never know. To get started, one player has made the nominated dealer or button. Then the two players to the left post the small and big blinds. These are false bets to get the action started. The big blind is always double the small, but unlike a tournament, the blinds rarely change. However, they are sometimes increased to spice up the action. We start here with $300 and $600. There's also an ante of $100 per player, which must be paid if they want to play in a hand. Once the blinds and antes are posted, everyone is dealt two cards. We have a round of betting. Then three cards are placed face up on the table, called the flop. These are the community cards for all the players to use. Then we have another round of betting, after which the fourth card, the turn, is placed in the middle. This is followed by some more betting and the last community card, the river. Then we finish off with a final round of betting. The best five card hand takes the money. Button in front of Patrick Antonius. Small blind, Tony G. Action on Alan Cunningham. He's going to throw it away. Over to Andy Block. Six hundred, Blake. Six hundred. Six hundred. <laughs> Made it eighteen. Eighteen. You no, know, he's going to raise it up. He makes it eighteen hundred. He's got a couple of tens there. Well, it's a position he's been raising an awful lot in the cutoff. It's called the eighteen. So he's not likely to get too much respect. The the, both the blinds have called him, and for once, he's actually got a genuine hand. Only one overcard between the two blinds, the jack. No <coughs> five, seven, five, three, seven. and look at this. We've got an action flop here. Phil Ivey's got the okay. over pair. Tony G is flop top two pair. Well, he hasn't been too lucky so far today. Five thousand. Five's called. And, and you get a bet three, from five. Phil Ivey, five thousand dollars, and a quick call from Tony G. Surprised he didn't put a raise in there right away. The turn is the jack, and now that's one more card that he cannot beat. Check. It's a jack. You want to get rid of this one? I don't need it anymore. Yeah, we could have gotten it. Bill's reaching to fire again. No, I'm done. Okay. Uh, Just want to take it off. Yeah. It hasn't been Tony G's day. You wonder if he's a little gun shy here. 14,000. And Phil Ivey's going to make it $14,000. I'm all in. Yeah. All in. And look at this, Tony G check raises all in. That's a big, big raise with the 7-5. He knows he's only going to get his money in now in a bad spot. That's a massive raise, about $90,000 more. I can't imagine Phil calling this. The interesting thing is you wonder if he would have gotten more action on the flop. But now the jack comes out. Does that scare Phil Ivy? Pot is hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars. Yes. Yep. Fifty, seventy, eighty, ninety-two, ninety-four, three, ninety-four, four. Ninety-four, four. How much? Ninety-four thousand four hundred. How much? 94,400. <coughs> it's almost as if Tony G is trying to buy the pot. There are plenty of kind of draws that uh, Phil can be in good shape in here. He might think that Tony G's got seven, six of clubs, that kind of a hand. Tony G has really played this hand a little unorthodoxly. Yeah. And you can see the wheels turning. All the players very interested. This is a big pot, $140,000 pot. I 
I can tell you one thing's for certain. Phil Ivey wishes he hadn't bet that 14,000 now. Trying to replay the hand in his head. What is Tony G trying to represent here? Such a strange bet on the turn. You can see maybe it's confused Phil Ivey a little bit. As you can see from the percentages, it wouldn't be the end of the world for Phil if he does make the call. He's still got a few cards he can catch. The three, the jack, or the ten. Right. He's counting. He was stuck about 80,000 earlier on in this tournament, uh, early on in this cash game. He'd managed to grind himself back to only about 25,000 behind. If he makes this call, he's in an even worse state. Interestingly enough, Tony G had not <coughs> rebought. You wonder how quickly Phil Ivey would have called. Yeah, you're right. If this is 50,000 less, I'm pretty sure Ivy would have called by now. Could be thinking Jack flush draw. Could have had two 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 big hearts. He's caught the Jack, and that's 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 going to cripple Phil's hand. I think he's going to muck. Well, that's the interesting thing. If Tony G had something like Queen Jack of Club, Queen Jack of Hearts, your tens are no good there. You can really only beat something like seven, six of clubs. Of course, the big difference between this and tournament play is if he gets this wrong, he's not out of the tournament. He can just pull up some more money. He sat down with $200,000 dropping the ocean to a man who's won over 8 million in tournaments, not counting what he's won in side games. The Tony G obviously winning. Rebought for another $50,000 here, making this call even harder for Phil Ivey. Phil Ivey, one of the greatest players in the game today. The wheels are turning there. Obviously, all the players. Cool. Well, he's decided to call. He's in bad shape, but he has got a few cards to catch. He needs a three, a jack, or a ten. Or this $233,000 pot is going to go to Tony G. Hey. <coughs> Last card. It's the a king. The king of clubs, yeah, and Tony right. G is going to yeah. win this pot. Yeah. <laughs> and a big smile for Tony G there as he takes out a $233,000 pot. And Phil Ivey not happy at all. Obviously the big over bet, check raise there ten, on the right? turn, confused Phil Ivey. He had a 10. Right? Ten. One of the cards was a 10. 10 jack. In a cash game, you want to put people on tilt. In tournaments, the strategy is so different because the blinds go up, players fall out, you're getting more and more money the deeper you go. In cash game, nothing changes, but you do increase the blinds every now and again if players agree. So the pressure you put on is to isolate people, heads up, the weaker players. Get heads up with them, as many pots as you can. That's how you make money. And after 55 hands, Tony G now up $83,000. What a good time to rebuy 50,000 more, huh? Chris Ferguson still up 52,000. Eric Lindgren up almost 40,000. And look at our big loser. Probably one of the greatest players in the world today. Phil Ivey is down almost $140,000. Well, what a comeback from Tony G. Join us after the break to see if he can continue to dominate the table. Welcome to the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game in London. We've got a new player in the game. Here he is. It's Brian Townsend. Brian Townsend, one of the best internet poker players in the world. He's known as SB Rugby on Full Tilt site. 
I find cash games more exhilarating than tournaments because the stakes are much higher. Uh, when playing tournaments, you're only playing for maybe a $10,000 buy-in, and the prize, first prize will be a lot, but with cash games, you can be playing for just as much money and have as big as wins and losses as uh, the biggest tournaments. So I find that much more exciting, and I like to gamble real high for a lot of money. Yeah, he's also uh, played the it's biggest cash surprise. game in Las Vegas at the Bellagio. Had a very bad uh, uh, time around the World Series, dropping three million within a very short period of time. 1.8 live and 1.2 online. But he'd already had a good time before that, so he could afford the loss. No stranger to big bet poker. And I believe he sat down at this table with 200,000. And with uh, Phil Ivey stuck over 130,000 right now, I there's definitely going to be some fireworks to come. And look at these two are going to tangle up again. We've got a raise from Phil Ivey in early wow. position and a call from Tony G. And Eric Seidel on the button. This one's going to be four to the flop with Andy Block finding suited connectors in the big blind. Four players. Well, there's certainly a lot of action here. Two, queen, five. Queen, five, two. A couple of clubs out there. <laughs> well, with four in the pot, the original uh, leader, pocket threes for Eric Seidel, 5, is still out in front. But Tony G with a uh, middle pin three for a straight is going to be the one leading the action. And that's going to win this pot. And with Tony G up over 80,000, you wonder if he's going to keep his foot on the pedal all night long. Well, he might not he might not keep his foot on the pedal, but he's certainly going to be a little bit more vocal now that he's over 80,000 in front. It has been a tough table so far for Phil Ivey. Obviously, things not going your way at the moment. What's been the problem, do you think? Um, nothing really. It's just a normal fluctuation of poker. You can't really um, judge a poker game over... I think we've been playing about four hours now. So it's not really that big a deal. I think I'm stuck... Um, a little over a hundred thousand, and I'm not really sweating it. I mean, it was one hand that came down between me and Tony where I, I could have gotten away from it. I put him on a different type of hand, and um, he had a hand where I was still probably uh, a little more than two to one dog, so it wasn't that big of a deal either way. And um, you know, other than that, I, I think I'm playing reasonably well, and so I'm not really too worried about it. You said last time we spoke that you were trying a few things out there. Is it time to get back to the, the Phil Ivey that we all know? Phil, Phil, I'm always trying things in poker. I'm always experimenting and just kind of, you know, um, that's how you get better. You try things. And um, you just try to figure things out and uh, make moves when necessary and kind of kick back when necessary too. So um, you don't really expect anything from me. I'm just going to play how I'm feeling. And uh, whatever I think is right is what I'm going to do. Good luck. Hope it turns around for you. Right. Thanks a lot. Well done. I hope the cold's getting better. Patrick Antonius, the ace queen offsuit. Hasn't actually had many hands today, to, uh, actually, Patrick. He's, be, he's been pushing with some marginal ones. This ace queen, apart from pocket tens earlier on. This ace queen is pretty well the most genuine hand he's had. Tony G is going to call this raise. Ooh. Ace Three jack guys. dominated by the ace queen of Patrick Antonius. Here's the flop. He's not going to want to see an ace on that. Queen, five queen. Well, how about two queens out there? <laughs> Check. <laughs> I wonder if Patrick Antonius checks this one if uh, Tony G's going to have a little stab. Oh, now, with two queens out there, you don't really put your p our opponent on a queen. Might Tony G get himself in trouble with two pair here? Well, he may try to find out where he is, but he's not going to do an awful lot in this pot. He may make a small raise and see if uh, Patrick decides to play. He's giving him a good start. I think that's going to be followed up with a pass. Pot is 13,000. One thing's for certain, I can't imagine Chris doing any more money in this pot. 
I'll tell you what I'll do every time you sit down, I'll give you a thousand. Let's see what the record. And Tony G has going to pick a better spot. Pass. Ferguson gone, <laughs> and Patrick Antonius is going to take down that pot. You got to think he was hoping for some action there. Decided not to so slow play, it. trying to catch someone in there with maybe pocket tens or pocket nines who doesn't want to release, or a weaker eight, or a weaker queen, of course. And then he could have got an awful lot. Well, we saw that earlier on with Eric Lindgren with his queen king on the jack ten nine board. He fired all the way and got himself a, a caller all the way from Tony G. Patrick Antonius, action on him right now. And uh, in first position, King Six oh. suited. Probably not a hand you play very often, but Patrick likes it. Well, here's another hand I probably don't play Race. quite the same way. 2,800. Brian Townsend getting his feet wet straight away, racing it up with 7-4 of diamonds. That's certainly a, a statement of intent to the commentators, at least, who can see his hand that he came to play. 2,800 is called. Two fours for Alan Cunningham. Pass. You see Chris Ferguson laying down there. It's actually a perfect game for Chris Ferguson. He can kind of lay low and wait for the big hands. Yeah, that seems to be the best game plan right now. There's so many, well, if you'll pardon my French, lunatics out there uh, uh, throwing their chips in the middle. Playing tight may well be the best strategy for this game at the moment. And Patrick Antonius is going to call this out of position. King six suited. Well, nine. both his cards are live, and if he catches his king, he'll be quite far in front, barring the case four. Well, what that wow. Now, this is a huge flop here. You've got Cunningham with a set of fours. You have Patrick Antonius with a flush draw, and of course, Townsend with nothing. That is the case four. Yep, the very last four has come out. And it's not stopping uh, Brian Townsend firing a... Oh. He almost changed his mind. He's reaching for more. He'd like to lose more in this pot. 8,600. You can see Brian Towns in there, AKA SB Rugby. He has a 1% chance of winning this hand. 7-7 seven, seven is probably the only way you can win this pot. Exactly. He's got a couple of chops though, 10-10, ten, ten, ace, ace. And Cunningham has been waiting for this big hand all day long, very patiently. Disciplined, and he's got a monster. Let's hey, see how he plays it. He's called. He's just flat called. Oof, that could open it up for a Patron Cantonius, possibly putting some pressure on with a re-raise here. If he does, he's definitely going to get himself a caller. Well, Antonius is definitely going to at least call this. You wonder if he's going to raise though. Try to take it down without seeing a turn card. And it looks like reaching. He's reaching for more chips here. Alan Cunningham trying to stay cool. Makes me wonder whether uh, Alan had even thought about the fact that Patrick's still in this pot. He's now giving a cheap card for a flush. He calls. He just calls there. Brian Townsend obviously very relaxed because he knows he's got nothing. Seven might be interesting though. Especially the seven of hearts. Well, it's a heart. It's a great card for Patrick Antonius. Pot is nearly $36,000. Let's see what Antonius does here. Cunningham knows that somebody might have had a flush here. He's looking down at his chips. That usually means you want to bet. 22,000. 22,000, I believe, was the bet. $22,000 bet. Pass. An easy pass for Brian Townsend, who's been uh, running without the ball in this pot. And Cunningham here has normally 10 outs to win the pot. Any four, any ace, any 10, or any queen. But we saw there's no fours left, so he's got nine outs. Pot is $57,000, 22 to call. <coughs> He's making the call. 
And the pot is $80,000 to the river. Alan Cunningham needs the board to pair. Well, Patrick Antonius is going to win this pot. Last card between two of you. And the river's a deuce of clubs. The quintessential blank, the deuce of clubs. Oh, and Patrick Antonius has got to love that black deuce coming on the river. And how much do you bet for value here? Well, he's already asked Alan how many chips he's got left. Is he just going to try and move all in? Or is he going to try and milk Alan for all it's worth? $75,000. He bet $75,000. Pretty much pot size bet. Well, wow, the pot is over $150,000. $75 to call for Alan Cunningham. Clearly, Antonius is trying to represent hearts here, and that's what he's got. Barry Mundy overseeing the action here. This is a very big pot, over 150,000. Last year, we saw Alan Cunningham lay down aces. And this year, we're going to see Alan Cunningham lay down a set. Fantastic lay down by Alan. And that pot goes to Patrick Antonius. $150,000 in the middle. And Alan Cunningham making an excellent lay down once again. And that's why he has won over almost $9 million in tournament prize money. A bittersweet <laughs> smile there. I was fairly confident he had a flush. I mean, uh, he could have he could have been bluffing, but that would have meant that he played the hand very creatively. And I just uh, went ahead and, I mean, I thought there was 80, 85% chance that I was beat by a flush, either seven, eight suited or a suited ace hearts. So uh, I went ahead and folded. And after 60 hands, Tony G, of course, our big winner, $88,000 up. Chris Ferguson still up nearly 50,000. Eric Seidel quietly up 28,000. And our big losers so far, Phil Ivey down over $140,000. And Alan Cunningham, really no fault to his own, he's down $35,000, loses with a set. So as the chips and dollars continue to fly into the middle, we are going to pause for breath. We'll see you in just a few moments here on the FullTiltPoker.com Million Dollar Cash Game. Well, the action's been fast and furious. We've already seen a 150,000 plus pot, a 230,000 plus pot. And this game is only just warming up. 2,000. With Phil Ivey almost $150,000 stuck. We're here at the million dollar cash game, well over a million dollars on the table now. And Tony Chi is gonna take it down without a fight. I'm known to be vocal at a table. I'll use it to my advantage. I don't think I'll use it too much in, in this lineup because it won't give me any advantage. But with new players, I'll try to you know, get them upset and see if I can tilt them a bit. But if I can, I'll, I'll come out and I'll go for it. But if not, I'll just stay calm and concentrate and try to not make any mistakes. It's very important not to make any mistakes. Million dollar cash game, well over a million dollars at this table. Blinds are 300, 600, Anthe's $100. And the action is on Eric Seidel. Eight time bracelet winner at the World Series. 600 to play. Action over to Alan Cunningham. Almost unfazed by looking losing $35,000. It's amazing the composure, the, the discipline he has. It doesn't hurt having a, a $9 million tournament winnings to your name. That's going to give you a little bit more of a, a comfort zone when you suddenly lose uh, a big pot like that. Six is called. Phil Ivey just calling in the cutoff position. Patrick Antonis on the button. Almost like a written invitation for him to play. Six is called. That's called. He's got a couple of ducks there. 
Any option? No Brian ads. Townsend's in the pot as well. Can you put your cards in place, please? Thank you. Four players. And we'll see the flop four ways. Ivy with the king three offsuit. Eight, two, ten. Very creative play there. Checked. And look at that. That's a set of ducks for Patrick Antonius. He is just hot as you can get. Tony G with queen nine. He's got the gut shot. 2,500. Does Tony G want to call this two and a half thousand for a jack? He might think that a queen's good for him as well. I don't like. I don't mind calling for a gut shot, but I don't like doing it when there's a two flush out there. Yeah, instead of having four what we call nut outs, where he can catch the best possible hand, he's only actually got three because if the jack of clubs comes down, he could be behind. Well, he's already mucked. Obviously nothing there for Ivy. He's going to throw it away. And Antonius is happy to take it down. Probably wants to win a bigger pot, but... It's a lot safer. And Phil Ivy there, hand on head, not having a good day at the office. Just another day there for him, though. And this is the man who did it to him, Tony G. $233,000 pot. Phil Ivy still wondering what went wrong. Three and six. Eric Seidel just throwing in his big blind. The action's going to be on Alan Cunningham. Six hundred to go. Round to action corner. Phil Ivy, Patrick Antonius, and Brian Townsend. All three of them, what I consider to be action players. Well, here comes Atri Action Patrick, raising it up with King Ten offsuit. Cold. And a call there from uh, Eric Seidel. It's going to be these two to the flop. Seidel so with the suited ace. Winning right now. Not a lot of boards he's going to be really happy with. That's not one of them. Still winning, of course, but he doesn't know that. I'd expect a continuation bet from Patrick. And as we stated before, more often than not, the aggressor will be rewarded in poker. And sure enough, the bet from Antonius and the aggressive play takes it down. What it takes to be a good cash game player, um, you need to be very disciplined. You need to um, you need to uh, control yourself very well because it's not enough if you win like four or five days and um, then you one day you kind of lose it and steam you can lose way more than you just made in the past week and um, so that's a very long run and uh, and uh, you need to have very good money management you need to be a good player as well because you're gonna face way tougher players than in tournaments Button in front of Seidel, small blind Alan Cunningham, big blind Andy the Rock block. Chris Ferguson first to act, and Phil Ivey next to act. Phil Ivey has just bought in for another $95,000. Yeah, he's now into the game for almost 300000 3100 Trying to give himself a chance to get out of it. And he is not, not a happy player. Was that Jason? Jace. Called. And Patrick well, Antonius here, he raises it up with a real hand. He's got Ace King suited. Andy Block is going to call him. We see Andy Block repeatedly defend the blinds with some marginal holdings here. King 10 off suit. He's in bad shape. Fortunately for him, a king did not fall. Flop comes out all diamonds, nine high. And you imagine it's going to go check, bet, fold. We'll see how it goes. No, there are. Obviously, Phil wants more chips. I can't give him. It's gone check check. The turn card has brought the king that hits them both, but uh, 
unfortunately for the action, it's a fourth diamond. Yeah, Patrick Antonius way ahead here. Five of clubs on the river. Neither player really interested in putting any money in the pot. And it checks down. And Antonius is going to win this with ace-king. <laughs> He also has the advantage of being able to show a genuine hand here, showing, look, I'm racing with some quality cards every now and then. So that kind of could work in his favour, giving him an opportunity to uh, race with some marginals in the not-too-distant future. So as the action intensifies, we're going to let the players pause for breath. We'll see you in just a few moments when the Full Tilt Poker.com Million Dollar Cash Game continues. <laughs> Europe's premier televised cash game has landed in London where eight of the best poker players in the world are all vying for their share of one and a half million dollars. Let's get you straight back to your commentators. Yeah, Phil Ivey really having a rough time of it. He uh, spent four days in Amsterdam, had a really good time, and then came to London not enjoying himself at all. He's taking a walk, he's trying to cool off a little bit. Well, I think he wants to get dealt in. He's told the dealer to take the chip. He's going to be first to act, so we better get back to his seat pretty sharp -ish. Here he comes. Phil Ivey there, one of the best players in the world, down over $130,000. <coughs> Still very sore. And he is first to act here. He looks like he's going to raise it up right away. 1800 1800 to go. Well, he's going to be pretty happy he got dealt in. He's come back to find the Kings. What a rush. Oh, and look at this. He finally raises it up, and this is the first time Tony G is not going to give him action. So far, it looks like he's not going to get any action. Unbelievable. Nobody calls him. And this is just one of those days for Phil Ivey. He's raised it about 50 times today, and this is the first time he's really had a legitimate hand, and he doesn't get any action this time. He doesn't even look for sympathy by showing it. I don't know. Just takes it calmly. I don't know how anyone can be upset when you just won $1,700 uncontested in a pot, but I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> He's not hiding it, though. He's not showing it, though, rather. $1,700, a small dent in the $130,000 hole he already has. Phil Ivey in the big blind here. Patrick Antonius, first to act. Action over to Tony G. Well, he's been happy to play with Phil Ivey so far today. He's now raising his big blind with Jack Seven of Spades. Tony G is like the class bully. Well, he's found a hand for Chris Ferguson. Phil not paying attention, which is rare for Phil. He's passing out of turn. That's added information for uh, for Jesus. And you know Jesus is going to use that now. Makes it much easier for him to raise, knowing Phil Ivey's going to fold. To be honest, I think that was pretty inevitable anyway when he looked down and found the ace-king. And sure enough. Sure enough, he takes it down. Tony G angrily throws his jack-7 away. I think he's a bit upset at the fact that Phil's not paying attention and throwing his cards away out of turn. Here we are at the ranking of the hands. First, we have high card. In this case, a king high would win it. Then we have one pair. In this case, pair of aces. Then two pair. Jackson nines will do it. Then three of a kind. Three of the same one. Three fours. Then we have a straight. Five cards in order, not the same suit. Then a flush. Five cards, the same suit. Five hearts will do it. Then we have a full house. Three sevens, two kings. This would be sevens full of kings. Four of a kind, four kings. Then we have a straight flush. Five cards in order, all the same suit. And here's the most beautiful hand in the world. Royal flush. Ten, two ace, all the same suit. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you think that was a fair play? That was fair as far as I'm concerned. It was. That's right. I think so. I think you should show your card. Well, Tony G still upset. About the passing out of turn by Phil Ivey. Trying to get the information off Chris as to whether he had a genuine re-raising hand before he was just taking advantage of the free information. 
A raise up from Eric Seidel to 2,000. Action, 2000. background. Well, and a call from Andy Block with his pocket fives. Chris has gone in the tank for a brief while before he passes. Eric with the ace king of clubs. <coughs> nice to actually see some semi-genuine hands. Well, we've got a real hand here. We've got Antonius with aces here in the small blind. Now, sometimes you can slow play that with a, the caller in between. You probably want to raise it up, right? Yeah, and Eric Seidel's actually been re-raised at least two or three times today. He might decide it's time to take a stand with his hand. We could be getting some real serious action. If he flat calls, it's probably going to bring, bring Andy Block in too. Seven thousand three hundred more. Wow, a pass there from Eric, and he hardly gave it much thought. And heads up here, this really should be a fold. From Andy Block. A pause in his chip plate while he gives it some thought. Obviously, you like those small pairs. I think if you hit your set, it's well... It's well concealed and you can win a big pot. Of course, you're around about seven to one to actually flop that set. And he's got to work out, I've got to be definitely going to get all of my chips in here. And then it's just probably a call. Because even flopping a set doesn't mean you're definitely going to win it, as we saw earlier on with Alan Cunningham. I think just to be certain, Andy Block should probably get away from this hand. It wouldn't be the worst call we've seen today. In fact, it wouldn't be the worst call we've seen off Andy Block today. But uh... Well, you and I agree that he should fold, but it's not a terrible time to call here. Thinks maybe he can win a big pot, and he's going to call this. Probably wants about an extra 30,000 in front of him to make this call, I think. But he's made the call. We're going to see the flop. It's aces versus fives. And let's see what the poker gods can bring for us. It's not a bad flop for fives if you think your opponent's got an ace-king kind of hand. Now, is there any way Antonius might check this one time? Well, it, I've done that myself at the World Series of Poker in 2004, checking the aces, 15. and it cost me an awful lot. And I don't 15. think Patrick Antonius is as bad as I am. He's decided to bet it. Trying to bring Andy Block into the pot. Keep it cheap enough that maybe Andy can re-raise and win the pot is what uh, he's trying to let that open. Pot is 37,000. 20. 37,000. 15,000 to call. Pass. Well, he mucks. That one goes to the aces and the good-looking chap from Finland, Patrick Antonius. Patrick, one big win, one big defeat as well. How well set do you feel at the table at the moment? Mm, I'm fine. I I just lost the one big hand, 75,000. Not a big deal. In fact, uh, I was winning a little bit and I guess I'm pretty much even now. Not a big deal to lose 75,000, but does it hurt a little bit extra because it was to Tony G? Not really. I I think I played the hand well, but he kind of got like in a rear. I wonder if he would have bluffed one more bet. So... Um, I don't regret, regret that, and um, I still could have fallen a river, but um, I'm looking for some more action. I like to play with jo Tony. So. And obviously you, start, you, you started with 200,000 as well. Has that given you a bit of extra power at the table, do you think? No, there's uh, Phil Ivey bought in for 200, Brian Townsend bought in for 200. I like to play with deeper deeper stacks than 100,000. Plenty more to come? Are you still confident at the table? Yeah, why not? It's it's a good table. It's fl fun. We play the, with those people. It's have a position of feel, which is nice. And um, and um, I have a good feeling. I I pretty much know where I've been in hands. And uh, there's still gonna be a lot of big parts coming. I feel. The action has been fast and furious. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Tony G up $84,000, Chris Ferguson up $53,000, Patrick Antonius, he's made a great comeback, up over $34,000, and wow, look at our big loser today, $154,000 in the red, Phil Ivey, unbelievable.
Brian Townsend's got the button here. Such an unassuming young man to have $200,000 in front of him. Action on Andy Block. And he is going to raise it up to 1800 with Ace Queen of Diamonds. Well, at least he started to find some genuine hands. He started off uh, playing some very marginals in this game. Pass. Pass. Ivy's called the Ace Queen with the 10 Ada clubs. Not a bad hand to be uh, snapping off big cards with. Well, he's got live cards and he's got position. Cool. And he's got a little bit of a smile on his face. <laughs> and Tony G, he, he looks to, he really wants to mix it up with Phil Ivy today. You can see him in there every single time. Well, they both flopped a straight draw. Check. None of them actually with a pair. The ace queen still in front. And it's been checked round to Phil <laughs> Ivy, who I'm pretty sure is going to have one pop at this. 2,500. 4,500. That one pop will probably be enough to take it down. The pot is $6,800. Tony G lets it go. And Andy Block has one last look at those nice cards before throwing them in the muck. Power of position, the power of a strong right arm, and the power of being Phil Ivy, a pretty fearless opponent and someone you don't really want to mix it up with. He takes that pot down. Phil Ivy obviously persevering. Many lesser players might crumble up and fold after being down $150,000. I started celebrating and I felt bad afterwards. So the race to be crowned champion here at the Full Tilt Poker.com million dollar cash game has intensified. We'll find out more next time. But from all of us for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>